Oj, shit, till med. Fanns det mina? Okej, okay, we are back again in the lab. And back on YouTube as well. Yeah. Three days before heading to Sierra Nevada. We're supposed to start the season last week in Abu Dhabi, but it didn't happen. So now it's uh, another altitude block before in Yokohama in May. But before that... It's three days of testing and then, again, and then one month in Sierra Nevada. Yeah. And then some sea level. Don't really know where we'll go for sea level, but... Um, yeah. Burr again. Burr again. Maybe. Maybe. But then it's Yokohama, May. And who won in Yokohama in the Olympic season last time? <laughs> yeah, that should be the goal for this time as well. So what we also do now is that I will put this one in from behind to get a uh, uh, like we will also look at this one, uh, the core temperature through the pill, uh, measured from uh, behind, and then we will also uh, look at the numbers compared to how the core sensor is. So we'll have I will have like core sensors all across my body and look at the the energy heat transfer or something numbers from those sensors uh, and this one will be like to validate the numbers to make sure that it's accurate which is no ways and um, yeah that's something we do on top of uh, the normal just like the metabolic profile uh, we're doing but uh, I'm not letting you I'm not showing you how I'm putting it in, but yeah, now I will just put it in and then I will get ready for my test and then we go. A good warm up, long test as you can see there. Good stuff I've just finished. It's like 2 hours and 15 minutes since it started and I'm probably being going to be done in two and a half hours time. So a long day ahead, but uh, here we go. So tell us, how was it? I'm not going to show you the finger, but uh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting today is actually that the last six times or the last two blocks in the lab I used plasma aid and I had like an increasement of 10% in the oxygen uptake today I want to see if it's dropping again 10% without using it so today I'm not gonna use it and tomorrow and Thursday for the run test, I'll do like today before the run test and on the run test I will use it and see if the numbers compared to the power I'm producing is dropping today and will be increasing again on in two days time so that's like something beyond that we're looking at quite cool Oh, my God. 
Come on. Come on, Christian. Ali, Ali, Ali. All of it, Mino, come on. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. 21. 21. Okay. Oh, interesting with the the O2 numbers, oxygen numbers. <laughs> Without plasmid, then we will see in two days how it is with. But then on the run. Mm. So. <laughs> but isn't it on the bike that you can maximize your VO2? No, you can you can more. maximize it in both running and cycling, mm. I guess. But, I, but another thing actually also is that actually you can't maybe have been equally high in power today as last time because all, both other times you basically burned the, turbo, the er erg as well, yeah. and that you didn't do today. So it's also likely that you actually have been a little bit higher in in, in power. power last time. Yeah. Yeah, or both both in <laughs> December and last time. Yeah. <laughs> Day one done and dusted. Okay, day. Like I felt good in the beginning, but I guess the power, especially on the last two steps, was a little bit below what it was last time. Uh, but also lack of high intensity like this, like session with all the travel over the last two, three weeks. But yeah, it's okay. <laughs> don't travel, don't take season breaks. The moral is. The moral is don't travel all the way to UAE to race Abu Dhabi to not race Abu Dhabi. You lose too much. What do you have there? I have a triple burger uh, bread. With? <laughs> Nutella. Mm. What do you see? Oh. Danish bread. Danish actually. bread. Mm -hmm. And then you have the bag filled with plasmade. Mm -hmm. and, and Red Bull and Morton and I'm now ready to just head over to ADO to finish my swim and then it's a swim test tomorrow so I will now head over to the pool now and just swim <clears throat> like easy an hour and then uh, chill for the rest of the day but first some food The ball Boom! Then it's soon go time. I came an hour too early. I <laughs> miscalculated the timing, so I had plenty of time to stretch, visualize. Ready for hopefully a good swim. Then I will do well without being tired from yesterday. Yes. Because you'll be loaded with? With plasmaid, with Red Bull, and I will go with Morton as well as we go. So high carb, I had salmon for dinner yesterday and the day before. Hopefully you become what you eat, you know? Yeah. Get ready for the warm up. And then.
Well, give us an update. Oh, that was eight by 500. Best, like I, I did equal to the best I've done before, which I normally do like every fifth test I've been able to do like to finish the last step at the right pace and today I did it without going all out so that's a good sign. The funny thing is that even this morning, yesterday I didn't do plasmid, this morning I did again and the O2 is up where it was before, like 10% above yesterday. Hmm. That's so, really uh, interesting. And the pace was even higher, like in the pool, like so. So now I have two by 200. Uh, all out left, yeah. uh, and then it's a day. About a second faster than last time. So now we do a little bit of resting and then one more and then we go. How long is the rest between the sets? Like five, ten minutes. Five, ten minutes. So. And what are you planning to do now? Are you gonna load up on carbs gonna, or any caffeine? Just or? be shaking. Just be shaking. No, okay. it's, it's too late for caffeine now. Too late. It normally takes like an hour to get the peak from caffeine. So I if see. you take it now, you will feel it uh, during your lunch. No. Ready so, for another one. So that's then? why you want to take the caffeine like in a race, like typically on the bike or before the swim. So you have the caffeine in your body during the race. A good one, I would say. The best I've done at least since Tokyo uh, of the swim test. So uh, it's going in the right direction at least, which is great to see. Uh, and uh, yeah, it will be interesting to see again the run tomorrow. I've been doing more sort of at or around race pace on the run, like around the 250 pace over the last three, four weeks. So hopefully that I will be like more comfortable there when I'm running tomorrow. Uh, I think that's gonna be like the key, the most critical part is like to be efficient around 250 pace. Uh, so yeah, it's been promising two days. And uh, it would be nice to head back, build more for my capacity, engine, getting more efficient, and then, uh, yeah, go to Sierra Nevada, to altitude, to thin air. Then it's like a bit cool down, and then uh, running. You gonna join? I think so. <laughs> yeah, then it's a run, easy run in the beautiful uh, terrain of uh, Bergen. I guess Roche ain't gonna join me there, but I can do some B-rolls for you. Thanks. So, uh, 
Have a look. Do you think it's going to be an easy run, Tobias? He says it's an easy run, but is it easy for you as well? Uh, I don't think so. His shape has improved that much compared to last time when I was running with him, so it uh, will be hard this time. What's his pace at an easy run? I think it now shifted to 430, 445. So yeah. Oh my god. Okay, so we have a little bit of help now from this swim team and they have a great Swedish guy, Johan, who is good with technique, so he was filming a little bit in the end at around race pace, so uh, uh, it's good to get some feedback from the ones who knows it pretty well. And now We need the help we can get. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and now it's a lovely run to get ready for tomorrow and I might no I don't mind I don't I don't might do the ride because my bike is still in the lab and uh, yeah it's just an easy run to wrap it up and then it's dinner in Bergen downtown to refill for tomorrow nice go easy on Tobias yeah 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 of course <laughs> or as we say like when you run with me you don't have to worry about intensity control if it's hard, you can call it a threshold run. If it's easy, you can call it an easy run. But we go in my pace. <laughs> Just change the name of the session. Well, that's the way to do it. You hear that? Yeah. <laughs> Last day. Let's go. Like after a test, what are you guys going to do with uh, like the results that you get in now? And how will that affect your training moving forwards? Oh, I guess it's more like getting an idea of how the last three weeks have been. Get like a um, confirmation of where we reckon the shape fitness is. And also to get an idea of what we have to work on in Sierra Nevada. Uh, as you can see today we are Changing from the smaller woodway treadmills to the big one. It's a little bit because uh, I reckon the feeling of running on the big one is more realistic to how it is outside. Because it's like harder surface underneath and this one is a little bit like softer. So yeah, doing the test there and hopefully seeing an improvement at around race pace. Three, three minute pace, 250. After that, it's a swim. And then I think we will do blood volume test this evening or tomorrow morning. I'm not sure about the schedule yet, but then at least before we are heading to Sierra Nevada, we will do like a proper blood volume test to see how many grams of hemoglobin I have in my body. And then, and also how many liters of blood. And then when we get back from Sierra Nevada, we will also measure it again to see that Make sure that I'm, I've been increasing because it's no reason to travel to altitude if I'm not able to increase the, the numbers of hemoglobin I have in my body. So uh, that's also one of the reasons why it's uh, risky to focus on losing weight as an example in altitude is because that's also going to impact your uh, the response you're getting from the altitude in terms of increasing the hemoglobin. So. Uh, Hopefully getting a good response there. I had some very good numbers before Sierra Nevada last time, like two months ago. I think I was like 10, 12% higher than what it was 12 months ago. So uh, expecting some good numbers, both pre-test and also post, no, pre-camp and also post-camp this time around. And then I guess tomorrow we'll do like blood test in terms of like iron and stuff to see that those numbers are okay because if you're going to altitude without having high enough iron level or ferritin level it's going to be difficult to get the response as well this is like an awkward position to be filled <laughs>
<laughs> well, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> How many core sensors do you have on your body right now? I don't know. Eight. 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 Plus mine or without mine? Now with, with yours. Okay. After you have nine. Or the total setup with yours is nine. Yes, yeah, so nine. I'm not in that shape. Eli phone på det lammer da. There's a moment away. It's a little bit warmer in here. My god, but it's sweating. It's in good time. How long has it been since you ran on this treadmill instead of... For, test, for testing, it's like three, four years since we've been on this one. Okay. Uh, but uh, two weeks ago, I was training in here. All right. Before Abu Dhabi for my brick sessions, because I was doing heat training combined with like a brick, and when I was running out there, because I'm running on the same spot, I'm getting so sweaty that if I'm running on one spot, it, the, the treadmill gets slippery. Mm -hmm. But here I can sort of move around, so it's getting uh, I can always run on a dry surface. Do you reckon this is much better to run on? It's a better feeling. Better like it's feeling. harder. Like the the surface is harder and. And with the shoes, like you're getting more response from the uh, surfers. So it's well, almost like running outside. Maybe. It's more like tarmac. Okay. Tarmac versus uh, taftan. I see. Or even tarmac can be like different. If you have a new tarmac, it's softer. You want to have like old tarmac. It's like old tarmac. Hard. And now you're doing the same calibration process that you do every time. Yeah. Yeah. Don't dynamic calibration so I basically do two kinds of calibrations uh, and the reason for that is because uh, then I can look for like instabilities in the system and of course at the same time also during the test drift in the system so basically before I would do a minimum of two calibrations the same kinds of calibrations and this then basically uh, gives me indication of whether the system is stable but then when I do also the same calibration procedure also at the end of the test, then I can also see how much the uh, numbers have changed before the test and after the test. And that will also tell me something about whether there has been a drift in the system too. Um, and then on top of that, of course, we also do validations of the system. And that we do by the long simulator that was actually, I think you filmed in one of the films. Yeah. And that's where there's a completely external system where we feed in a known gas, gravimetrically uh, known uh, oxygen con uh, concentration and CO2 concentration. And we control the flow of volume. And then we can also say immediately now, uh, whether the system off is off or not also. So it's a completely separate system that allows us to validate uh, the measurement in the system up to uh, six and a half liter of oxygen and CO2. So in this sense, we, we add quite a lot of redundancy because what I have to know is that on the one side, we do a lot of field measurements where there are more noise, there are more variations with, simply with the technology we are using. But here we can have extremely high reproducibility and of course it's not about the single measurements but it's all the measurement over time that then basically gives us um, uh, where we can track all the small changes and nuances because it is the, the changes that are interesting to me, not necessarily the, uh, a specific number in a sense. So yeah, so that's, uh, that's the important part of it. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even started and you're already bleeding. You should have seen the other guy. <laughs> Thank you
pretty warm in there. It's like 24 degrees almost. Something it's warm. Now. 24 point, it just was 24.1 before you started. <coughs> yeah, so it's increasing quite a bit. So I feel the heat, even though I have two fans blowing. 24.1 degrees of air too. towards me. <laughs> it's getting a little bit more cooked in there than out here. Well, you know where the energy is coming from. It comes, it comes from passion. Yeah. If you don't have passion in the bottom of it, you ain't getting far. So we're just like walking into a passion. room filled with passion. Passion and love. Ah. And now? Now it's the last two VO2 Max push. So now it's only so. just been like a warm up to the VO2 Max. Basically, basically. Nice. Hold up. Yeah. Where is Olaf? He's gone. Olaf! VO2 Last one Fast one Same speed as as I did last uh, Before Sierra But with lower auto which is great Means I'm more efficient And I'm actually having a lower lactate as well for the last one Or after VO2 So getting more efficient at the pace Which is more sustainable Which is what I need to be In order to take it Take what? Take it. Take it. Take what? Paris. Yeah. That's a wrap. Three days, solid ones. Uh, like on the run today, I did basically the same speed as last time with lower lactate in the end, and also like for the four and a half minutes of the VO2 max build-up step didn't really increase the lactate much, so I was able to like have a quite. More efficient stride, I would say, compared to last time. A little bit lower total numbers in the end. That's probably good. Like, I guess it's not efficient to have mid 90s in view to max numbers. So, uh, a little bit lower view to max, but uh, more efficient on the, on the stride. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was fun. Oh. Okay. Ready, set, go! Okay, so now it's time to head to Sierra Nevada to wrap the race pace a little bit more. 
I would say in general the threshold pace should be a little bit higher up there and we can also start earlier on the camp. We're doing a little bit like short intervals in order to sort of uh, get an artificial higher pace. So I will be having the stride I need for stride and stroke. That's key. Get the stride and stroke for Yokohama. Make sure subscribe to the channel, give it a like if you liked it. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, ideas of what uh, me and Roche can make on this channel in the future. But anyway, the channel is back up and running. Au revoir! <laughs>